Hello people of YouTube, it's Deephack here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.14 and Eagle Dynamics AH64D Apache Module. Welcome to Tutorial 9, FCR in GTM. Uh, FCR, in this case being Fire Control Radar, and GTM being the Ground Targeting Mode. This is one of uh, three modes we currently have in the FCR. Um, I'm going to do all of this from the CPG seat again, although all of these functions are also available from the pilot seat. Now let's go ahead and hide our iHads and hide the, the pilot body here. And, uh, well actually, before I continue, I'm going to turn off the auto search, because I don't want that popping up. But I'm going to leave the TSD on the screen and I'm going to pop it into attack mode. There we go, just in time, we got something show up. I'm going to shift my camera to the left a little bit, and we're going to set up our left multifunction display for the FCR by clicking the FCR button. You can also access it by going to the main menu and choosing FCR from the mission category. And here's the screen. And by default, it will put you into GTM mode. Uh, you'll see here that on the left-hand controller, you do have a switch that controls the radar modes uh, up, for GTM, right for RMAP, down for ATM, and left for TPM. Um, but we don't need to press that today because we're already in GTM. Uh, you've also got your left hand controller uh, cursor controller, and in this case that's going to move the cursor on the display. Uh, as always, you can bump it and get it into the other MFD. Um, we can WAS here as well. We've got the control for continuous scan or a single scan. That's also on the left-hand controller. And we've got store on the left-hand controller as well. If I move over to the right-hand controller, uh, we have the manu manual track um, hat, which in this case is going to allow us to slew the FCR. Uh, we can also choose the currently selected sensor. We're going to be going left for FCR in just a moment. Uh, and then you've got your, your FCR zoom controls uh, with controls for wide, medium, uh, narrow, and zoomed. Uh, we'll, we'll check that in a moment. There's also a zoom button, uh, which will allow us to, to zoom in the display. This, this zoom function is actually functional in GTM. It wasn't functional in ATM. So let's bring ourselves back over to the left-hand side. And before we go any further, I'm going to get George to turn us around because we're not quite facing the right direction to see targets. So I want to be about 060. He's going to bring us around. Rolling out. Rolling out. Excellent. Okay, uh, and now I'll go over the symbology that we have on the screen just now. Now note that at the present time, the CPG's helmet-mounted display is the selected sensor. So this is the FCR in its kind of deselected mode. Uh, we have the controls for turning the C-scope on and off. We've got heading across the top. This line here is the aircraft's current heading. Um, util, there's actually nothing in Util that will really affect anything other than you can power the FCR off. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it that you've got in there just now. And you can choose your acquisition source. I'm going to leave it on fixed, because by default I want to be able to point the radar forwards. So, uh, if we push the uh, sensor select to the left, we are now, you can see, CPG has control of the FCR at the present time, and we get some additional symbology. We now have the same target um, format button here that we had in ATM mode. This allows us to store all the targets that are currently in the, uh, the current scan uh, as target points, or we can individually store them using the cursor. We click target again, we'll come out of that. We can adjust elevation. Elevation can be automatic or it can be manually adjusted. Uh, now, I'm, I'm using the right hand controller hat to adjust the elevation up and down. Elevation is displayed here. So you could manually adjust the elevation, but you're, you're really never gonna need to do that. Uh, if I go back into utils, I can flip the elevation back to automatic. Uh, and that's the mode that you're generally gonna want it in. Uh, you see these two semicircles appearing on my heading display here. This is the direction the radar is currently facing, also shown with this line here. Previous uh, location where the FCR was looking is shown by this dotted line. And if I go ahead and, and hit um, slave and then deslave, it's going to point straight forwards because our current acquisition source is fixed. We also have these controls left and right here to slew the, the radar kind of 45 degrees at a time. 
Uh, we're going to leave it as it is just now, though. Is that 45? Like I said, it's more like... That's more like 90. So yeah, you can slew the radar 90 degrees at a time using these, or the manual tracker will allow you to set a very exact heading that you want. But I'm going to slave and then deslave that. And then we've got the zoom mode. If we click zoom, we get this box. We can place it wherever we want on the scan and depress the cursor. And we would get a zoomed in mode. That's actually not working right now, though, because there is no current scan. So with that, let's push our scan switch uh, forwards into single scan. You'll see that we get these white bars sweeping across the display. And after it completes its two bar scan, it will stop. Okay, I'm going to uh, hit pause just now. You'll notice a couple of different things happened there. Um, something to note, we have different symbols for different types of target. Uh, the um, You see this H style symbol? That's a tracked vehicle. Circles are wheeled vehicles, triangles facing upwards are air defense vehicles, and squares are unknown. The other symbology we have here is we have this dashed diamond, that is the NTS or next to shoot, that is the target that the radar has automatically determined is our highest priority, and by default if we made a hellfire shot it would go for that one. This upside down large triangle is the ANTS, and that's the alternative next to shoot. Uh, and you know, effectively, that would be the next target we would engage. Uh, we can adjust this though. Uh, note that um, there are various versions of the different target type symbols. So they can be unfilled, like this one and this one is. So th th these are kind of non filled symbols. There are filled versions of these symbols, uh, and that will mean that they are. Uh, within, uh, well, between 500 meters and 1,500 meters. So basically they're they're close. That, that makes them kind of a higher priority. These empty symbols are more than 1,500 meters away. Note the maximum range of the radar is 8,000 meters or eight kilometers. So you've got eight, six, four, two here. So if they were really, really close to us, they would, they would show up as filled. And if they're filled with a dot, as these two wheeled vehicles are, that means that they're moving. Now you'll note that these two wheeled vehicles started off as high intensity and then they've gone dull as they are just now. For moving targets, that basically means that they're, um, what would you say exactly? They've probably moved since the scan. So moving vehicles will go dull after five seconds uh, from when the scan completed. Non-moving or stationary vehicles, as all the rest of these are, uh, they'll do that after 30 seconds. If I take us out of pause just now, after a period of time, you'll see the stationary vehicles will also show up as low intensity uh, because the system will have decided that, yeah, most likely that's not an accurate position anymore for those particular vehicles. For, for vehicles that are stationary, that's probably fine. For ones that have the dot and were detected as moving targets, that's almost certainly a problem. There, you can see all of them are now low intensity. But the prioritization remains. If I want to alter the prioritization, I can do so with the cursor. I can move the cursor over one of these vehicles, and I can depress the cursor, and it will move the next to shoot symbol to that particular vehicle. Now, we're not going to cover uh, the integration between the FCR and the TADS today, but generally speaking, you would then want to check these vehicles using the TADS as well. Uh, that could be simplified using the C-Scope option here. If I box C-Scope and look at the TADS, you'll see that all the symbols that we have in the FCR are now overlaid on the TADS. The same would be true for the helmet-mounted display uh, if we were using that as well. So just be aware of that. Uh, most of the time, you're probably going to want to keep the C-scope mode turned on. Uh, RFHO is for radio frequency handoff. That's data link. We're not going to cover that today. Um, and yeah, again, acquisition source. So uh, if I wanted to go ahead and use the zoom now, now that we do have symbols on the scope, I could move this zoom box over these symbols, depress the cursor, and it will now break them out uh, and make it a little bit easier to see what I'm looking at. And again, I can select what I want to be the next to shoot. Uh, by default, you can't change the uh, alternative next to shoot other than you can swap it with the NTS. That's the only control that you have there. Let's uh, come back out of zoom. Other thing to note, this is the full wide version of the scan. Um, you can access the, the wide version of the scan by pushing right on the FCR zoom. So right for wide. If I press down, uh, I'm now going to get the, the medium 
Uh, so you can see when I'm in wide, we have all these tick marks. They show me the, the various modes uh, and what their FOV would be. So pushing down, I get medium. Pushing left, I get narrow. Pushing up, I get zoom. Uh, and zoom is the most zoomed in version. Uh, now, of course, the nice thing about this is that the refresh will be much, much quicker. So if I'm in zoomed mode and I press to do a single scan, see how quick that came up there. That was really, really fast. Uh, and we can see that we now have new symbols showing up on the display. Uh, and if I make it, uh, this is narrow mode, I'll do another single scan. Oop, there we go. And wait five seconds and these moving targets will go dim. There we go, because we now have less confidence about their current position than we did before. So if I put it into continuous, we will continue to get updates on the positions and you'll see the vehicles that are shown as moving are in fact moving. We can see those symbols continuing to move. Uh, and I could steer... Actually, I've got to stop the scan first. I could steer the radar a little bit and then start the scan again. And there you go. You can see they appear in slightly different positions within the scan volume now. And I'll stop that scan. Okay, I'm going to bump it back into the wide and do one more full scan in the wide mode. Of course, this takes much longer, but we get a nice uh, wide field of view. Excellent. Now, uh, if I wanted to store the positions of any of these, let's say that I'm particularly interested in this wheeled vehicle over here, I can box target, I can move my cursor over that target and depress. You'll notice it says here it's created target 07, and the next one that I would create would be target 08. I can now get rid of target mode, and uh, that's now done there. And if I move across to my right multifunction display, uh, First thing that you'll notice is that all the FCR symbols are also shown on the TSD. The other nice thing is the field of view of the FCR is shown on the TSD, and you can see here my target symbol for target 07. So we could now reference that later if we wanted to, uh, and that's kind of quite a handy thing to be able to do. Uh, for example, if I go cursor acquisition, and I bump my cursor, there we go, I bumped my cursor over to this side, Get the, oops, get the target 07 symbol. You'll see that now T, actually it says T50. That's not what I intended to do. Uh, let's, uh, let's try that again. Cursor acquisition, T07. There we go. Acquisition source is now T07. I can now unfreeze the display. And uh, if I wanted to slew the tads to that, I could now do so uh, very, very easily. Uh, I'm currently in the FCR mode. So if I was to slave and then de-slave, the FCR is now centered on that specific target. I could go zoom mode and do a single scan and I'm now centered down right on that particular target and I've got myself a nice quick scan. A other thing to note as per the ATM mode is that this boxed number at the top right is the total number of targets the system has detected within the current scan. Uh, the radar is capable of detecting up to 256 targets in any given scan volume. However, it will only create a prioritized shoot list out of 16. So it will generate a priority uh, based on the threat that that um, particular target poses to you. Uh, and it that will be based on kind of the, the type of the vehicle, its range, uh, and various other criteria. Uh, so, yeah, you only get a maximum of 16 actually showing up on the screen, but the, the system can generate up to 256 scans. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That is basically everything that the uh, the FCR can do in the GTM mode. Uh, this is the basic mode that you're going to use to employ the, the radar hellfires, although, of course, if you hand off to the TADs, you would then quite easily be able to employ laser hellfires or anything else you want as well. Very important thing to note, the FCR has no mechanism of uh, detecting friend or foe. So you're probably going to want to inspect these targets using your TADs to ensure that they are, in fact, enemies before you prosecute them. That would probably be a good idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's that's basically it. In future videos, we will cover the, uh, the linked uh, modes where you can uh, link the FCR with the TADs and also the data link. That will be in a future tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe, and I'll see you all next time.